July the 3rd, 1994, in Australia, a new ecumenical body was founded, the National Council of Churches of Australia. In the Roman Catholic Cathedral of St. Christopher, a special service was held for the establishment of this body. It's, it's a rite of purification. The Eucalypt uh, purifies the atmosphere. The service began with the Aboriginals in a pagan ceremony of purification in the sanctuary. Source of comfort and warmth. Uh, Was this simply a folkloric display? Are such improprieties permitted in a Christian church? smoke and placed it before the altar. One of the things that, um, Roman Catholicism, in an effort to adapt the gospel to the cultures of different peoples, admits the influence of pagan elements. It regards the introduction of non-Christian elements in worship as an enrichment of the church. Of the church, and the churches increasingly are doing this. It's uh, all of the mainstream churches now uh, are actually doing this. Yet, is not the spirituality of Christian worship thereby adulterated? Court, and it's very much part of both the Orthodox and Roman Catholic liturgy, and also many parts of the Anglican Church. I was told by one of the dancers that they actually have to prepare themselves to dance something like this and, and uh, read their minds of wrongful thoughts, uh, open themselves up and become quite vulnerable because, and let the spirit speak to them. of this council. The Patriarchate of Antioch, the Church of Romania, and the Ecumenical Patriarchate sent delegates to this ceremony. of note that the Roman Catholics have abandoned the part of observers and now participate indeed as leaders in such ecumenical bodies. The representatives of the 13 member confessions had to pass through purifying smoke and the aboriginals would greet them. Catholic Archbishop of Canberra welcomed the new ecumenical organization. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I welcome you, one and all, to this truly historical occasion. It is my privilege to offer you the joyful hospitality of St. Christopher's Cathedral. I thank the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples for making us welcome the Aboriginal ceremonial purification reminds us of the need for forgiveness and reconciliation. 
These are fundamental to the welfare of Australia and for the fulfilment of the aims of the National Council of Churches in Australia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Afterwards, there was joint prayer. God, giver of gifts, you reveal the creative energy of the Spirit in the abundance of gifts we share. For these, we bless you. You call us to recapture the vitality and freshness of the Christian faith through fidelity to your life-giving word. Keep us in the truth revealed in Christ. women of different confessions symbolized the spirit that supposedly overshadowed those who were praying together. Bishop Bede Heather made known the principles of the National Council of Churches of Australia. The National Council of Churches in Australia will gather together 13 member churches in prayer and worship in order to express more visibly the unity willed by Christ for his church. The Anglican Church of Australia the list of the 13 members of the National Council of Churches of Australia, along with Anglicans, Nestorians, Monophysites, Roman Catholics and Protestants, unfortunately includes three Orthodox churches. The Greek Orthodox Church. Bishop Seraphim, assistant to the Greek Archdiocese of Australia, represented the Patriarchate of Constantinople. The Romanian Orthodox Church. We will. The Salvation Army. We will. The Syrian Orthodox Church. We will. And the Uniting Church in Australia. We will. And the Antiochian Orthodox Church. We will. We will. Proprieties, however, culminated in the entrance with the gospel by Aboriginal women.
Holy Gospel according to John. Chapter 17, verses 1 to 5 and verse 22. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, And the glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, and we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Orthodox ecumenists endure taking part in these successive falls of the Roman Catholics. For how long will they follow the Roman Catholics in this non-Christian venture of theirs?